Sure, I'm Ralph Lawler along with Don McLean. I'm really happy to welcome in here with us here to start the second quarter. Team's president of basketball operations, Lawrence Frank. Uh, Lawrence, I, I was kind of responsible for the beginning of that quarter. I turned it over to Don to finish it <laughs> off. Kind of a problem. Don kind of let go of the rope a little <laughs> bit. Yes, I did. You know, a couple yes. turnovers, letting letting Abrinas get loose a little bit. Don, we're going to work on your defense a little bit. <laughs> the, the, you the can say that again. People the, the told me that was for great. 20 years. The ball movement was terrific at the outset. It really was. I mean, you look at the start we had. I, I think, you know, Gallo and Tobias were terrific, but I think it was spurred by by Avery and Pat's defense and then Marchin's rim protection. And what a difference from what we saw two nights ago. Just a five man game, great ball movement, limited them to one shot. And just think about how many uncontested shots we had to start on a 16 2 run. Here's a question I have Lawrence and it's been asked to me a couple times in the last couple days is why doesn't Boban play more that the, question gets asked and you know he has 18 and 8 two nights ago and even more questions why doesn't Boban play more but it sounds like he is going to play more now without a doubt I think you, you, you get what you've earned and every single time he's touched the wood. He's been tremendous. Right. Uh, you know, it's funny. From a player efficiency rating, he has the all-time greatest PER in the history of the NBA oh, preseason. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the uh, Boban's terrific. Uh, I think you know a lot of people see Boban's size. They see his personality, and, and what they sometimes lose sight of is how incredibly skilled he is. Uh, and so he, he's earned the right to play more. Doc's rewarded him with more playing time. And I think Boban's really going to help us throughout the year. So there you go, chance for MVP the other night. We're not all that far off if he's got those kind of records. <laughs> that Holy wasn't for folks. Don. <laughs> no, no, that was not. No. For, for God's sake, no. But to your point, Lawrence, I mean, a seven-four guy going six for six at the foul line the other night. Yeah, his touch is incredible. It's incredible. Plus his footwork, Don. You can appreciate that. And Ralph, you've seen every player who's played this game is for his size and balance and just his footwork to be able to to be able to maneuver around guys. Uh, it, it's really, really impressive. And I think it, until you see it and players have to go up against it. I mean, he impacts the game really on both ends because he's also a very good rim protector. And it helps when you can dunk with your feet on the ground, too. You know, I never had that problem <laughs> a, 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 as a five foot eight gentleman. Uh, <laughs> even on a six foot hoop, I couldn't do that. It's interesting, Lawrence, if you look at your basketball team, the, the big three era was positively great. Uh, you know, the Lob City whole thing was terrific, but it, it never got you where you wanted to go. And so now, without a, a total teardown, you've absolutely changed the cast completely, but you're still a good, competitive ball club. But that trade you made last year in January, the Blake Griffin trade to Detroit, has just opened up things that just seemed impossible at that point. It's amazing. Yeah, and you know, we, we talked about the trade when we made it. Now let's look at it when we're actually putting bodies in uniform. So you have Tobias, who we think is one of the most underrated players in the NBA. You have Avery Bradley, one of the best on-ball defenders in yep. the NBA. You have Boban, who is now beyond the cult hero. You know, he's the PDR champion. And the pick is yep. Shea Gilders yep. Alexander, who I, I think, you know, we've all talked about it, is how, how encouraged we are about not just his future, but his present. He, he's he's going to be a really special player. And that's not to mention the flexibility you get next summer that you wouldn't have had a hundred percent I think it, it really was a franchise changer and that that doesn't diminish Blake's contributions um, but we're, we're all about being player centered and championship driven and we had to be honest with ourselves we, we weren't going to win a championship with the group and now with the opportunity to have double max space and we also never want to lose sight of our own free agents and so you know, some of these guys, many of these guys can be carry forward players with us. And you think about stars and, and Don, you think about your experience in the leagues. Stars want to play with tough, hard playing guys. Uh, and we have a bunch of that. And I think we're establishing a culture and a direction um, that I think is going to be an unbelievable opportunity in the best market uh, in, in the basketball world. In the middle of the Lob City era, when you're winning 54, 55, 57 games each year, but not getting beyond the second round, I had a good friend who happens to be a basketball Hall of Famer tell me, I think your big three guys are really good. I'm not sure they're good enough to win a championship. And, and I guess that kind of, as, as you look in a rearview mirror now, maybe 
Chris Paul sensed that. Maybe that's why he left. But he, that's kind of the truth. And yeah. now you can, you can start and go a different direction. But without a doubt, I think, look, sometimes the hardest thing is to look in the mirror yeah. and to acknowledge, you yeah. know what, we're, we're good, but we're not good enough. I'm pretty, but not that pretty. <laughs> well, I never had that problem. My personality. And, 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 you know, it was just hopefully I wasn't the ugliest. Um, but, but I think it, it starts with ownership. And we have a lot of people, when they think about Steve, they think about the wealthiest owner in sports. The reality with him, other than the wealth, it's how much he cares about the players and their families. And as you guys see, you, you watch him at every single game, how intense of a competitor he is. And the ability to resource our players and our organization like like never before. And, and wind up bringing in Jerry West as a consultant. A kind of a nice crutch for you to have. And you think, wonder about so-and-so, you just turn to Jerry. He, he's unbelievable. I mean, look, and obviously everyone knows, you know, Jerry's the greatest architect in sports. And his passion is incredible, his knowledge. And you're right, it, it's it's having an instant Wikipedia page, you know, uh, always uh, within arm's reach. Lawrence, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Keep up the good work, okay? Thank you. Appreciate it, thank guys. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you.